Hello and welcome to this presentation. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we've held three of these presentations, just explaining to parents um, where we have been during the pandemic, what it is that we've been doing, and how we can um, support your children back into school. So this is a recording um, of the information that I gave out during these during these sessions. Um, I start with the core values of the school because it's really important to us as a school, and I think us as a community, that we live to these core values. Um, and honesty takes us to the first stage of being able to move forward. So it's really important that we have this clear and open dialogue. Um, empathy, we all understand that everybody has had a different lived experience of the pandemic and it's important that we are cognizant of how people have come through this pandemic and what effect it's had. Ambition, that never falters. Our ambition for our children is central to all that we do. It's really important that we respect other people's points of view and other people's opinions and actions and of course tolerance is the fruit of all education and that's a really important part of everything that we do at Fulford School. Um, I'll start off by sharing with you the principles. So the first bold principle is very much a principle of our school in any circumstance um, of making sure that our students have the best possible education possible. And then under that, we have um, identified some of the principles that we used when we went into pandemic and we were able to work in a different sort of way. Holding on to our core values and um, making sure that um, students, pupils had a structured, sequenced and varied activities to support their current curriculum. And the current curriculum is really important because we obviously want to get um, the pupils back into school and making sure that they can pick up their curriculum and continue to make um, progress. Um, a variety of activities needed to be used, including audiovisual resources um, and due regards given to the individual needs of pupils, because each pupil has a different set of needs. They have those in the classroom and they have those outside of the classroom as well. Um, students and pupils needed to receive feedback um, because obviously that creates that circle of education um, and it was really important that there was an opportunity to excuse me, question um, aspects of that work. And we used class charts and the school email as the main vehicle of communication. And I'll come on to class charts a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, Obviously, there were barriers to us being able to do what we would like to do, um, not least we weren't in school, so that obviously could go and constraints part of the curriculum. Understanding that for many parents and carers, um, they were in a difficult situation where they were trying to manage their children's education, as well as having work and family commitments. Um, access to technology is not straightforward. Not everybody has access to computers and tablets, and even when that is and is access within the family, sometimes you've got mute, multiple people within the family trying to have access to computers all at one time, and the computing um, constraints that we have within a school also play into that category. Um, parents and carers required to manage the logistics and safely supervising children at home. We understand um, the benefits of technology, but also some of the dangers and some of the risks of technology. And it was really important that we were able to keep children safe um, and, and, and often possibly unsupervised educational settings. And also the teachers have also had their own experience of the pandemic um, and have school related um, responsibilities well, the care responsibilities that mean that they may not be available throughout the normal day and we're having to adapt their working practices. Um, we use class charts. I know um, many schools have used Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or something similar. Um, we didn't have access to them, don't have access to them. We are migrating to Microsoft 365 and will from September have access to Microsoft Teams. Um, class charts is primarily uh, a, a behaviour management system and um, it enabled the school to be able to um, contact parents and students um, explaining how they've gone on at school um, on, a, on, on a day, celebrate their achievements, identify issues which were going, weren't going quite right within the classroom. 
um, and also setting homework. It isn't set up um, to be able to deliver home learning, although lots has changed as we've progressed on through through the pandemic and class charts have put extra features um, on on their on their system. So it, it we 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 basically been using using um, a piece a piece of work which wasn't wasn't set up to enable us to be able to um, do um, work from home and we do we're doing virtual learning but we have used what we've had in place and we have adapted that. On top of that we've used lots of different um, platforms and some of them are listed down there and um, from using um, Oak National Academy, Bite Size etc. So what can students expect? Students expect the teachers will plan lessons and tasks that relate closely to their um, current curriculum content. Again, that's really important that we are not treating this time as lost education. We are working our way through um, schemes of learning and that we reinforce existing understanding knowledge and introduce new content um, in line with what the schemes of work that the children would have been following had they been in school. Um, this is this is what that would look like. This is what what should be um, being experienced. Um, there's a three three um, pronged approach to that. So in terms of the practice, that's how we make sure that we get the knowledge and content over to the students, um, and how we then um, make sure that that is well practiced and understood. Making sure that that is done via a form of assessment. Some of that being formal assessment um, and some of that being informal assessment as the lessons progress and you can see there's a very um, number of activities which the teachers would have been used they would have, would have been using as we've um, progressed on through those learning episodes and in terms of assessment that was very clear that there will be an assess piece of work submitted every two weeks for core subjects that's math english and science and every three weeks for non-core subjects and um, could very well be formal or informal um, and i know in terms of being able to receive that feedback that that's caused some frustration for some families and um, as i said class charts um, is not um, being designed in in, in, in terms of that being easy to manage. Um, we've had some videos posted up on the web, a website, which Mr. Rosie has done, um, to be able to explain how you access your feedback. Um, it's, 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 it's more complicated than we would like it to be. Well, please, if you think that there's been no feedback given, please look at that video, watch that video. Um, it's about changing some of the dates on the class chat functionality um, and the feedback for those pupils and um, pieces of work um, will, will be there. The feedback um, is, is personalised, needs to be personalised and needs to help the understanding and help the learning of the pupil. On top of that academic support, we've put a series of pastoral support from tutors on making weekly contact with pupils. Um, Prior, prior to us moving on to the weekly contact by form tutors, we were doing telephone conversations with um, heads of heads of house. Um, that was not working the way we wanted it to work because it was really difficult sometimes to get in contact with families and um, families answering phones um, and we're often having to make multiple phone calls and not managing to get in contact um, with, with students or families. So we moved to uh, an email based um, system where the form tutor was making contact and we were we were following up um, situations where um, that, that email wasn't responded to. Um, the pastoral support team make a weekly and sometimes daily contact with certain families so we have an identification of needs of families um, and families where we um, know there are specific issues or specific needs and we're in contact um, in, a, in a much more regular basis um, supporting the learning and supporting um, the, the, the social and, and um, specific needs of, of those particular particular families and um, we've also made sure that we are signposting to different organizations um, to support specific issues which may have come up during the pandemic like mental health support 
Um, we have worked collaboratively um, across across the city um, and, 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 and with other stakeholders um, throughout, throughout the region and the country. We obviously have lots of DfE guidance coming through and um, that, that, that happens on a daily basis um, and we, we work to that guidance and to the best practice that is shared with us. Um, you'll remember I sent out um, uh, a, a letter about three or four weeks ago saying we'd had over 200 pieces of guidance that has that is continues continues to increase we work um, with YSAP. So YSAP is the York Schools and Academies Board. That's all um, schools, state schools within York are represented there. And we meet there three times a week and we work um, both um, as a whole school system and also with um, secondary heads. And we also work with um, the council and making sure that we have uh, an approach which is beneficial for all pupils um, within York. Um, we work with the unions and professional associations. So the reason we do that is we all, we all um, have similar challenges that we need to be able to address and similar priorities. So our first priority um, has always been to provide a full-time education within school for pupils whose parents are key workers, or pupils um, where they are deemed um, vulnerable and need that extra support of coming, of coming into school. So that's meant that there's been um, a full offer going on in school with members of staff coming in um, and teaching on a rota basis and we have some um, um, some 30 plus students um, on a regular occurrence who who access that and um, sometimes sometimes more sometimes less um, we also obviously um, are making sure that we understand the best practice in providing students with work um, and making sure that we are offering the challenge and also the support. We started off by trialing Zoom lessons um, in for sixth form for sixth form classes. Zoom when it first came out had a series of issues and um, resolving around safeguarding. There was a phenomenon of Zoom bombing um, where st um, students would um, possibly send their, their their logins or people would do random random login trials um, and get into get into sessions and um, that was a that was a situation which has 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 been um, vastly improved by added security and um, we've also um, put video recordings together and um, used narrated narrated powerpoints um, like all schools um, in York we started that with a trial in the sixth form and um, we've moved on to doing nearly half hour lessons now over Zoom in the sixth form. What it necessitates is that we have a, a um, chaperone in with those sessions um, to make sure that what is going on in the sessions is as we would expect within the classroom and um, we can't have the same monitoring on a zoom on a zoom call as we would do within the classroom and it's really important that pupils and students follow the guidance and the guidelines that are given out in those sessions um, we have had situations where pupils and students have accessed Zoom sessions um, inappropriately from inappropriate locations um, and have also streamed some of those sessions inappropriately um, and obviously there's, there, 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 there's issues about um, safeguarding which that can bring into, in, 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 into focus when people's images are streamed um, without, without permission. Um, we've moved on to trialing that with um, some of the younger year groups. Again, that's proved to be really successful um, for those students who've been able to engage and have turned up to those sessions. It has brought us challenges. Again, we've had some people who have um, misused that and the need for the um, for the for the chaperone has been very clear. We've split those classes into half, so we've only had 15 students, um, because we wanted to be able to get that interactivity and again be able to monitor what's going on within those sessions. And um, that is tremendously 
um, heavy in terms of staff timing because we are teaching half classes with two members of staff. So the number of sessions that we're able to do limits that. Um, like like lots of lot, 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 lots of organisations, that's something that we work on and something that we are adapting on and something that we are increasing within our our arsenal of presentations to students and teaching the students. Um, and I know that maths at the moment is is is, is running um, quite an extensive trial using Zoom. And um, PE has done some work in Year Nine um, using Zoom as well, and we keep that we keep that monitoring. Um, we've increased the number of audio visuals in terms of narrated PowerPoints and videos. Again, that causes us, us some problems and situations where students um, have, 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 with, throughout the region have um, screen grabbed some of, some of those images and have made um, offensive means of, of members of staff. This is obviously something that the unions are are very um, clear on in terms of um, making sure that we don't end up with situations where their members um, are, are, are ridiculed um, across across the piece. That's something that we support, and that's something we work with closely and um, with unions and professional associations to make sure that the the amount of um, protection that we can put in place not just for students but also for members of staff is is very clear and that's something we continue to work with we've also had year um, 10 students into school doing face-to-face -face sessions that started on the 15th of june and um, we are only allowed to bring 25 percent of the cohort into school which has meant that in order to provide one hours of contact time um, over that whole year group, it's, it's necessitated four hours of contact time because of the quarter cohorts that we have to teach to. Yet again, that is um, tremendously um, heavy in terms of using teacher time in terms of um, that contact time that we're able to offer all of our students. So uh, an issue for us as, as, as other schools has certainly been about the amount of time that um, Zoom sessions, face-to-face -face sessions have taken, um, the, ex the added commitments of teaching lessons um, in school, of the pastoral support that we're giving to students, particularly um, a smaller group of students who have quite intensive um, pastoral support um, going through going going through the pandemic. So I know that some parents have asked why we can't just move everything onto Zoom um, and teach in normal timetable and I hope that identifies some of the um, constraints that we have um, and some of the some of the other other responsibilities that we have within a school in terms of making sure that all our community is served and all year groups have access to a quality of education. Um, what we were doing at the beginning of the year um, isn't what we're doing now, and, and that's only right. And um, when the pandemic started, um, we were very much in a situation where we were looking at supporting students on a possible short term um, short term um, break from school. Obviously, that's ten changed into a much longer term. We have um, new guidance in terms of what is happening in September, and I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, but we were trying to do lots of review. We were also supporting year 11 and year 13 students who we thought at that moment were still going to be doing exams. Those adaptations have changed, the needs of the cohorts have changed, the needs of individual have, cha have changed, and we've tried to make sure that we support those students um, by changing our provision. Um, the amount of time spent, the amount of feedback, um, and, and the expectations. And I've tried to make sure that that's all being tracked um, on, a, on a weekly basis, by, by letters coming out from not just myself, but also um, videos and, and support materials from departments and other members of the leadership team. So as we look 
to September and see where we move forward to that we've moved forward on that there's a lot of information out there um, I sent you a link to the latest guidance which is looking to the return of all students in September um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is that we are hoping and looking to looking to be able to provide in September so when I was doing these um, these presentations, we were I think to two of them at the stage where we hadn't had um, any any I think it was a leak of the guidance about all students coming back, and there was a plan in place for full time return and also a shadow plan for a partial return. What we understand now is that come September, all students will be returning to school. Our key principle behind that is to make sure that we identify key concepts, knowledge and skills that are needed for future progression and we make sure that those are clearly understood by the students. Um, students will have all had different experiences of the lockdown. Um, some, some, some students and pupils will have been engaged in the full programme of learning and made really good progress. Other students that will, um, as a matter of fact, be a little bit more, a little bit more patchy. Um, what we will make sure we do is we do a full analysis of the learning of the children um, and understand where any of those gaps are. Um, what the uh, curriculum leaders have been doing at the moment, working with their teams, is looking at their schemes of, of schemes of learning, making sure that those key concepts, which are, are, are entry requirements for further progression, are understood, are identified and will be taught um, very clearly and very specifically when students come back into school um, and, and also throughout that cycle of learning as they progress and, and access new, new learning. Learning. That will be covered with um, a robust assessment um, in terms of making sure that we have that evidence of what it is that students know and what it is that students um, don't know. And that will be um, augmented as we progress through by some of the extra support that we're going to be able to put in place um, with the extra funding that has been identified um, through the DfE for, for, for catch-up um, and it is important that we really understand how best to use that extra support by having a really good understanding when the children come back to school of any gaps that pupil may, pupils may have. We've also got a very clear programme of pastoral support, again understanding that for some students um, it will be as if they've just had a long weekend and they come back in and they're very pleased to be back in school and that's and, 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 and they, they don't bring any issues into school in terms of some of the experiences that they have had um, over the pandemic. For some students it won't be and we'll work on a bespoke approach supporting those students who need that extra support as well as having a general pastoral approach and um, identifying um, some of the issues which have come up over pandemic and making sure that we address them on a general approach and, and, and refocus upon, upon the learning. Um, I'll just go back there a minute. Um, in terms of what we are looking to do um, for the full return, we obviously are a very um, congested site um, with, very, with, with very limited access. So one of the things that we are working on at the moment is making sure that we can get the students safely into the site, safely into the building. And I know that there's been questions on, on, on bus access. Um, the reality is that we get 17 buses coming into our site um, every, every day and 17 buses going. Um, it, there's, there, was, there had been some questions um, about whether we were able to have um, year-only buses coming into the, into the school, that would mean 105 buses. So I think um, straight away we can say that that's not going to be a possibility to be able to do that. So we are working with the um, City of York to make sure that we can have a, a clear plan and clear protocols in terms of how the students are going, going to be coming into, into the site. Um, the, best, the best possible way of being able to do that is for, for children to walk or to use their bikes. They understand that that's not appropriate um, depending on where you where you, where you live, um, but certainly that's what we'd be that's what we'd be looking looking to do. Um, and then once they come into the school site, um, we the, we will be 
making sure that the children are, are in bubbles of year groups. So we will make sure that we have got specific learning um, environments for different year groups. That will mean that um, the lessons that they will be doing will be within that particular base, um, where we will try to make sure that we also provide access to specialist rooms um, like art, DT, um, music rooms, that will particularly be the situation for students in year 10 upwards doing exam courses. Um, in terms of where we are with students in year 7, 8 and 9, I think in the first instance that is going to be a limited if, if any access to those specialist rooms, just because we have to maintain um, the, 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 the bubbling of the students to make sure that we don't across um, the different the different year groups. That um, form of planning is all is all going on at the moment. And as soon as we're able to identify what that school day is going to look like for your son and daughter, then we will get that out to you, much in the way that um, I did the video for the year 10 students who were returning for face to face. I've tried to um, address some of the situations that questions have come in um, about as I've gone through the presentation, but I will look at some of the questions um, which came in prior to the um, sessions that we ran earlier on and also were asked on the night. Um, how will teachers establish what children have been able to learn while they've been studying at home? That's through the assessment that we'll be doing within, within school. That doesn't mean that children will be coming back and doing tests. That means that within that teaching approach, um, those key concepts which are really important to be um, understood will be um, will be tested by the teachers to make sure that students students do know that in lots of lots of various ways. Why hasn't the school been teaching via Zoom? I hope I've been able to identify um, why that situation is there. Um, there's elements of safeguard, there's elements of making sure that all children have got access to, 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 to that mode of learning. Um, there's um, issues in terms of the ability to be able to do the other um, aspects of the role that the school needs to needs to address the support for individual students, face to face teaching, um, and making sure that that holistic um, offer is 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 as strong as it possibly can do. So Zoom teaching has been happening quite extensively now within the sixth form, trialed within um, within the lower school, and we, if, if we were to go back into full lockdown. We, we feel we're at a situation where we would be offering that um, across year groups. Can teachers telephone pupils once a week fortnight, especially in main subjects? Again, hopefully you can understand that teachers are doing multiple tasks throughout the throughout um, their, their working week. Um, and it's 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 not possible to have those one-to-one -one conversations with them. Um, with, with 30 children within a class, as well as being able to do um, some of the some of the other work that I've just explained. How will school support those pupils who have struggled and stretch those pupils who have progressed well? And um, that will be within the differentiation that we use on a regular basis within school anyway, that um, support will be given. And again, I, I mentioned some of the catch-up funding um, that we again awaiting guidance for in terms of exactly how that's going to be used. And um, Children, children will have made good progression. We found that from the year ten students who've come in, um, that our teachers have been really impressed by how how well they've learned and how much progress they have made, and we'll make sure that those children continue to be able to accelerate just as they would do um, normally within within taught lessons. Um, we have a full that this this is about plans for supporting pupils with mental health issues. We have um, a full package of support in place. We've had that in place um, when year ten have come in. So we have dedicated workers. Um, we we have a school a school social worker. We have a mental health um, ambassador team, um, and we have got a program in place to be able to work with those students who are finding things difficult at this moment and will continue that work as they, as, as we progress back into school. Will children need to give up lunch and break times in order to catch up? Um, that will be a reality that for some children that will be the case. Um, 
we're going to be in a situation when we first return where um, lunch times and break times are going to be very regulated because they're going to have to be done in year group bubbles um, and the ability to be able to do extra sessions within that structure is going to be really limited but as we move back to normal that's a normal part of our our school our school day the children will will, will go sometimes to see teachers and, and, and get support during a lunch and a break time what additional pastoral support are you going to provide? Um, we've done an extensive increase in the amount of pastoral support within, within the school. Um, we have moved to year groups, which is, is, is fortuitous in terms of how the school needs to be organised within year groups on, on, on the way back. So that's something we hadn't done, that's something we would have had to have done over these last two weeks because students need to keep in those year groups. Um, each head of year also has an assistant head of year and a full support um, team behind them, including um, um, teachers and members of staff who will work on um, pastoral support, mental health issues and social, um, social needs. And we obviously liaise very closely with our SEND department in providing that. Um, will pupils be able to drop options? Um, our ambition is that pupils will continue on with the curriculum. Um, we, we, we look at dropping options as a last resort and it's something we have long conversations with, with pupils and families about. It's not, it's, it's not a norm and it's not a good way of, of progressing um, and we will follow that same, that, that same process. So the, the expectation will be that all pupils will continue on with the curriculum they've got. Are you still reorganising the tutor groups? Yes, yes we are. And as I said, um, if, if, we hadn't, if we hadn't been, we would have to, because students have to be able to, 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 to be kept in these bubbles. I think it will give um, a really focused and positive um, opportunity and platform to be able to address specific year group needs, because obviously um, the needs of our new year seven coming in into a new school and transition are going to be very different to the needs of our exam groups um, preparing for exams next year. So I think that um, that, that, that structure will be really beneficial for the children. I'm aware that some schools have saying ch children will not be returning in full school uniform, will not be the same, same from Fulford. Um, in terms of where we are with the latest guidance is that students should return in uniform. Um, I think that is the case throughout York as well. So we will be um, at this moment in time expecting children to return in, in their full school uniform. Um, we keep in contact with Public Health England. If there's any change in terms of the guidance about what children should be wearing when they come back to school, we'll obviously work um, to that guidance that Public Health England give us. Um, will year 11 be given priority of full-time education? Everybody, we have full-time education, so everybody will be in school. Will subject and exam content be adjusted? Um, there's already been indications that certain elements, for example, the speaking part of the English exam won't, won't be happening, but that will be something that the exam boards and Ofqual will need to decide. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll adjust whatever, whatever decision is made. There's consultation out there at the moment, which we feed into. Will exams be put back a few months again? There's been conversations about that, but nothing has been identified as such. What is happening with Berlin? That's a trip which is going out in October. We are working um, with the provider to look at um, seeing if we can postpone that trip to in, 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 into the new year. Um, so, when, so we'll be in a much, a much um, clearer space in terms of where we are with the pandemic and, and making sure that that's really safe. Why don't teachers use video? What well, teachers are using video, that's an, in, an increasing part of the provision. Um, and and we, we, we should have seen more, more video. We understand that um, it's, it's, it's really beneficial for students to hear the voices of their, of their teachers. Um, and, and that's something that if we do go back down into a uh, lockdown um, in September, something will be, will be, will be used in a lot more. Will teaching and support be in place over the summer? The school has been open since um, the 20th of March um, over all holidays, um, supporting key workers and, and, and workers um, and children who are considered to be vulnerable. Um, that will not be happening over the summer, over the summer holidays. Um, the school will be closed um, and there will be 
other support available through um, City of York in terms of in terms of summer summer clubs. There is no summer school. Um, we really need to understand what the needs of the children are when they get back into school, so that we can we can use and, and pinpoint um, any any sort of in, in, input that we're going to be giving to the children in terms of supporting their their their, their mental health, their, their their social well-being, and their academic well-being. And we'll, we'll be best we're best doing that when we have a full a full assessment of where they are so we won't be running a summer school and um the, ch the children the children will will be on school holidays as will as well as school and the staff so um that is the end of the questions that that i had i hope that i've been able to answer some of those questions that you have if i haven't then please do um send send those questions in and i will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible to be able to provide you with um answers if there's anything very specific about your sons and daughters please do contact heads of house um the pastoral system and um, send something into the office emails um, and somebody will get back to you to to offer that support um, once we are able to firm up what the school day is going to be looking like in September um, I will I will get some information out to you either via video um, or through letter just to explain what it is that we are expecting to be happening one of the things that we are doing um, to help us with our our preparation is that we are moving one of our inset days from later on in the year to have two inset days um, on from September the 7th and September the 8th to make sure that we are fully prepared and fully trained up for the for, for, for the arrival of your, your children, which will be um, starting on the Wednesday. But I will send a letter out um, giving you the full timings of that um, later on this week. Um, this has been a really difficult situation for all of us um, and as I said at the beginning everybody has their own lived experience um, and it's really important that we understand that we have to be able to work as one community and um, supporting each other working to our core values um, and making making all efforts that we possibly can do to um, catch up on any work that students have been missing, support in any particular needs that students have, and certainly within school we have a structure and system in place to be able to do that. We are very much looking forward to seeing your children back in school in September. It won't be the same as when they left. There will be structures and systems in place which we will be putting in place um, in line with government guidance and in line with protecting um, the children from the pandemic and, and, and any outbreak that may occur as we progress on through and also making sure that the whole school community is protected. I'd like to thank you for your support. Um, I know that the teachers would like to thank you for your support as well um, as we've gone through as we've gone through these difficult times. Um, we hope that September will bring better times, obviously um, much more much more um, education within schools than we've had over these last months um, and making sure that we all work together for the best results and the best um, elements that our school has to share. So thank you for listening um, and we will be in contact again soon. Thank you. <laughs>